Dear God, I was always told or at least taught to believe, and perhaps a little of both, that you not only know exactly what's in a man's heart, but you can see right into it. That you can count every single hair on a man's head. So with that knowledge, be it false or be it real, all taken into account, then you can imagine my frustration that out of all the painful and heartbreaking experiences that have accumulated over the years that fester within me like some nagging buzzkill party pooper agenda from Captain Pecker, the fucking party wrecker himself, I naturally just thought that you would just make it all go away or at least help me forget. However, unfortunately, this could not be further from the truth. In fact, despite years of prayer and trust in your divine plan, the troubling, haunting, disturbing memories of heartache, pain, and trauma not only still linger, but they actually fester within me and pester me like a buzzing cloud of hungry mosquitoes and annoying gnats. I know now, dear Lord, that life is an aquarium of regrets and you can either break that fucker and let it all spill out or drown in that bitch. Oh dear Lord, I give it all to you and still trust in your divine plan, even though in my own poor, tattered, battered, and puny human mind, I can make no fucking sense of it all. Oh heavenly creator, somewhere out there and all around, maybe even so within, I know human beings have been trying to unlock the mysteries of your elusive secrets since the dawn of time, company included, none with any avail. So I guess I'll just keep on keeping on. I guess I will spin the beautiful yin-yang of good and bad and roll with those brutal and ugly punches. I guess I will walk the tightrope of the middle of that fucked up and yet beautiful yin-yang where the cool winds crush into the hot breeze and balance myself on that wall of tornadoes and hurricanes. Amen. O oh, heavenly creator, the wizard who threw the magic concoction up against the wall and watched the magic spell splatter across the universe, the wonderful and magical endless colors of stardust and space gas, throw that whole splash of messy goodness in my stew. Grandma says she's going to make me a homemade stew with buttered garlic bread. If I promise to pull up a stool and stand over the oven top and help her make it. O oh, heavenly creator within and without me, I want the best damn stew ever made. I want the love and joy and the goodness and greatness. But I wouldn't know or understand those things unless I can toss in the spices of ugliness, the hate and anger, the confusion and the heartache. Thank you, dear creator, in advance for what is already mine the good and bad, the joy and sorrow, the beauty and the ugly. Because without that magic concoction, that grandma stew would be bland and dull and tasteless. Thank you, God, for grandma. Thank you, God, for her delicious stew. I will embrace every bite down here, somewhere in between and alongside the dark, muddy banks on the laughter of the saints and the cackles of the devil. Dear God, when you hear my own maniacal laughter or the mix of both, please know it is my thanks and my celebration all rolled up in one. So delicious in Grandma's homemade stew. How on God's green earth would she have been able to make it otherwise? Life is only meaningless when you forget to embrace the struggle and give thanks for the mystery.